Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If you are some amazing person that has made it through all of our factoring videos, uh, congrats to you and we thank you for that. We are going to do a general overview of factoring um, at the difficulty that you might see in an algebra or a pre-cal class or an introductory calculus class. Uh, remember that the first thing you will always do is look for greatest common factor. Do that. That's a quick way to simplify and then look at what you have left. Remember, once you pull out greatest common factor, you want to again, and after every step of factoring, look at what you have remaining and see if anything else can be done to factor more, uh, to factor it completely as exams or assignments or exercises will probably say. Once you've factored greatest common factor, uh, you'll have some scenarios that are pretty common. If you have two terms left, it might be a sum or difference of squares. It might be a sum or difference of cubes. Those are things in special factoring that you can check for. Remember that sum of squares will not factor. That will be prime. Difference of squares will factor into conjugates. That's the same terms in the factors, but add and subtract in either factor. And then some difference of cubes, those are the ones where we use SOAP to apply the signs and we have a short and a long factor. So two terms remaining could be one of those. If you have three terms remaining after you pull out greatest common factor, uh, you're probably factoring as a trinomial. Uh, we've done all of our trinomial factoring by grouping. We also did an extra video where we showed you a shortcut when a is one, when the leading coefficient is one, you don't have to do the entire grouping method. Um, you may also recognize recognize some things as perfect square trinomials and that may provide you some sort of shortcut as well. But if it's three terms, we assume that there's some sort of trinomial and we'll, that will be based on grouping for us. If it's four terms, um, it may be that it's already grouped for you in terms of the grouping method because with the grouping we take three terms and we break the middle term up into two separate pieces giving you four terms. So it's possible that if you have something that already is four terms, you may just simply finish the factoring by grouping as well. Um, no matter what you do, remember always factor completely and see if you can go farther than you already have. So here we'll look at some examples of two-term factoring, just so you get a kind of, you know, if I'm looking at something, would I know what to do? So our first one here, we have 9x cubed plus 24x squared. If I look for greatest common factor first, the greatest common factor of these two terms, and so 9 and 24 both have a common factor of 3, and x cubed and x squared both have at least x squared. So I can factor out 3x squared as my greatest common factor. I say 3x squared times what is 9x cubed? That's 3 times 3 would give me the 9, and x squared times x would give me the x cubed. 3x squared times what would give me the 24x squared? And the answer there is just 8, so I get 3x plus 8 left. Once I pull out my greatest common factor, I look at 3x plus 8. Can I factor more? The answer is no. This is as simplified as this one would get, so we would leave this as 3x squared times the quantity 3x plus 8. Let's look at the next one. 9x cubed minus 36x. It's pretty similar looking. Um, here, 9 and 36 have a common factor of 9, and x cubed and x have a common factor of x. They both have at least x. If I pull out 9x, 9x times what gives me the first term? Answer would be x squared. 9x times what would give me negative 36x? Answer would be negative 4. So I have 9x pulled out as GCF and x squared minus 4 is left. And this here that's left, this is actually a difference of squares. So I look at what is being squared to give me x squared and what is being squared to give me 4. And that's what will go in my factors as conjugates. So I have 9x and what's being squared to give me x and 4, or x squared and 4, is x and 2. So I will get factors with x and 2 in it with difference of squares. And remember we get conjugates, so one will be add and one will be subtract. And that is our fully factored version of number 2. 9x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. For the third one here, we've got a similar looking thing also, 9x cubed, this time it's plus 81x. So I can look at 9 and 81 and see a common factor of 9. And x cubed and x, I also have an x in common. And if I factor out a 9x as my greatest common factor, 9x times what is 9x cubed? Answer is x squared. And here 9x times what gives me 81x? Answer is positive 9. 
And if I look at this one, x squared plus 9 is left over, and this is a sum of squares. And if you remember, a sum of squares will not factor. So this one will not actually factor any further. We were able to pull out 9x, but you cannot factor any more because what's remaining is a sum of squares. A little bit different than a difference of squares, which does factor. For our last one here on this uh, two-term page of problems, we've got 9x cubed minus 72. Looking, there are no x's in the second term, so I won't have any variables in the GCF, but 9 and 72 are both divisible by 9, so I can pull out 9 at least. And then left over, I would have x cubed in the first term, and 9 times negative 8 will give me the negative 72. So here for this one, I look at the two terms that I have left over, x cubed minus 8, and this is actually a difference of cubes. x cubed is a perfect cube, and so is 8. So we say, well, what is being cubed? And that will give us our short factor for the difference of cubes. So what is being cubed here? x is being cubed here. What is being cubed to give me 8? 2. So this is like a and b in our difference of cubes formula, if you remember that. And remember, for our difference of cubes, we have a longer factor in the back, and we say the square of the front term goes in the front, so square this, we would get x squared, and we square the back term and put it in the back, 2 squared would be 4. We multiply them and put it as our middle term of the long factor, x times 2 would give us 2x, and if you recall for sum and difference of cubes, we use soap to assign the signs, and since I started with a minus, same would be minus, O opposite, opposite of minus would be plus for the next one, and always plus for the last one. So we have a GCF of 9, a short factor of x minus 2, a long factor of x squared plus 2x plus 4. Okay, so four similar looking problems, all of them worked out fairly differently though. Looking at some three-term problems, we've got trinomials here, 6x squared minus 13x minus 15. Uh, for this one, I would look for a greatest common factor. 6 and 13 and 15 all have a GCF of 1, so we don't pull that out, and they don't all have an x. So I would just factor this by grouping. Um, I would first maybe look here and say, well, let's see, a times c for this first one, 6 times negative 15 is going to be negative 90, and b is negative 13. And we want two numbers that will multiply to give us negative 90 and add to give us negative 13 according to our grouping. And if we think about it for a second, we should get that the numbers are negative 18 and 5. So I actually break up my middle term as negative 18x and 5x. So it's still negative 13x, but we've grouped the middle terms. We don't change the first and the last terms when we do this, if you recall. And now we just simply look at things in pairs. What's the greatest common factor of the first pair? Well, 6 is in common for the coefficients, and they both have at least an x, so I pull out 6x. Uh, left over in the first term, if I pull out 6x, would be an x, and 6x times negative 3 would give us the second term. So we're already saying x minus 3 is a factor. I copy that down again in my grouping procedure, and I say what times x minus 3 will give me the second half. Uh, if you see 5x here, a pretty good guess is 5. 5x there, and 5 times negative 3 would give us the negative 15. Remember that our inside stays a factor for grouping, so x minus 3 is a factor, and our outsides become a factor, 6x plus 5 is our other factor, and the answer there for this one. For number 6 here, 24x squared plus 28x minus 12. We don't have variables in each term, uh, so we wouldn't pull out any x's, but 24 and 28 and 12 all have a common factor of 4. So I pull out 4, then I would have 6x squared for the first term, I would have 7x for the second term, minus 3 for the third term. I still have a trinomial, so I now look at this and I say, can I do this by grouping, right? So with grouping, we look at a times c, and we compare it to b and see if we can find the numbers. So a times c here is negative 18, and b is 7. 
And if you pause for a second, if you'd like, think about what two numbers will multiply to give negative 18, add to give 7. The answer is 9 and negative 2. So we will regroup our middle term in terms of 9 and negative 2. I'm going to save myself some writing with the 4 and just draw an arrow and remind myself, hey, 4 is part of my answer here. It's one of my factors. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this into 6x squared plus 9x minus 2x minus 3. You notice we've grouped our 7x into two separate pieces there. And now we look at greatest common factor in pairs with grouping. What is the greatest common factor of the first half? 6 and 9 have a common factor of 3 and x squared and x both contain an x. So if I factor out 3x from the first half, I would have a 2x left over in the first term. I would have positive 3 left over for the second term. 2x plus 3 is present in the first half. I find it in the second half. I say what times 2x plus 3 will give me the second half. And because you notice we have the same terms but opposite signs here, this must be a negative 1. Okay, so my answer here, remember I had a greatest common factor of 4. I have a factor certainly of 2x plus 3. And then remember the outsides become a factor, so this is 3x minus 1 for our final factor. Or this one. Okay, looking at the next two here, we have number 7, we have 8x squared plus 8x minus 48. Uh, again, don't have variables in each term, so we won't pull out any variables as part of GCF, but 8 and 8 and 48 are all actually divisible by 8. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out an 8, leaving me simply with x squared for the first term, and actually x for the second term. And if we divide the 48 by 8, we will get minus 6 for the last term. So we look here and we figure out grouping. And now we can use a shortcut because a equals 1. So we have our shortcut. And we say a times c, which is just c, is negative 6. And b is the coefficient in front of our x term. This is actually a 1x here. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to give negative 6 and add to get 1. And if you think for a few seconds about that, the numbers are going to be 3 and negative 2. Those will multiply to give me negative 6 and add to give me positive 1. And because a is 1, remember we can just take these numbers and put them in the factors, right? We have a shortcut and we don't have to do the entire grouping method with this. So I will get x plus 3 as one of my factors from this, and I will get x minus 2 as another factor from this, and we will be sure not to forget our 8 as the greatest common factor that we pulled out first. Okay, 8 times x plus 3 times x minus 2 for that one. Looking here at the last one, 2x cubed minus 20x squared plus 50x. They are all divisible by 2, so I'm going to factor out a 2, and they all have at least an x in them, so we'll also pull out an x, greatest common factor of 2x, leaves us with x squared in the first term, 2x times negative 10x would give us the second term, and 2x times a positive 25 would give us the third term. So we look here and we have uh, a equals 1, we can do a shortcut here and say what numbers will multiply to give me 25 and add to give me negative 10. You might also see this is a perfect square trinomial, but the answers, uh, the numbers that work out for this are actually negative 5 and negative 5. We get the same number twice, so that tells us it is indeed a perfect square trinomial. So using the a equals 1 shortcut, I can write x minus 5, x minus 5, just as a step though, right, let's go ahead and keep our GCF of 2x. Uh, the way we would really want to write this though is since we have the same factor twice, we will write it as x minus 5 quantity squared. Perfect square trinomial there. Okay, good. So those are some three-term examples. We're going to move on to four-term examples. If it's four terms, remember we could just assume that it is already grouped for us and we just try to work it from there and see if it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But if we can make it work, we should. So we'll look here at the first two terms, 12x cubed and negative 16x squared. They're both divisible by four and they both have at least an x squared. So I'm going to pull out 4x squared. Uh, left over in the first term, 4 times 3 is 12, and x squared times x would give me x cubed. 
or x times what gives me negative 16x squared, it would be minus 4. So I will go ahead and copy down my 3x minus 4 factor. And part of my grouping, I say what times 3x minus 4 will give me the second half? Well, what times 3x would give me negative 15x? Well, it would need to be a negative 5. And you can also see that negative 5 times negative 4 gives me the 20. So this does factor by grouping. So we'll go ahead and write our factors down. We have 3x minus 4. And we have 4x squared minus 5. Now we look at either of these. Can I factor these further? Uh, this cannot be simplified. This looks really close to a difference of squares. 4 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. But 5 is not a perfect square. So we're factoring in terms of whole numbers. We would not factor that as a difference of squares, and that would be finished. It's close to a difference of squares, but it's not exactly one. Over here, if we look at the first pair for this one, 18 and 27 have a common factor. Greatest factor is 9. x cubed and x squared, I can again pull out x squared for this one. If I pull out 9x squared, left over in the first term would be a 2 and an x. Left over in the last term would be positive 3. So I say 2x plus 3 is a factor. I copy it down. 2x plus 3. What times 2x plus 3 will give me negative 2x minus 3? I would need to change the signs there. So I get 2x plus 3 in both halves, makes that a factor. And the outsides become a factor, 9x squared minus 1. I look and see, can I factor further? 2x plus 3 cannot be factored more. But if I look here, everything is a perfect square, and it's a difference of squares, which can factor further, right? So I have 9 x squared and 1 are all perfect squares. Subtract means I can factor. So if I just factored 9x squared minus 1, I say, what perfect squares are these? 9x squared is 3x times 3x, and 1 is 1 times 1. So this will factor into conjugates with those terms in there, 1 plus, 1 minus. And of course, we still have our 2x plus 3 as one of our factors. So we get three factors for that one. This one did end up a difference of squares nicely. This one was close, but not quite a difference of squares. Okay, so that gives you several examples and a general review of factoring to go on. Um, there will be some things that don't factor by grouping. They have some x cubes in them, or they have higher powers of x. Um, and those you know, may be covered by the methods that we have, but there are going to be a lot of things that aren't actually factorable by grouping, by difference of cubes or squares or anything like that, trinomials. When these methods are not enough, we will have to fall back on something called synthetic division, uh, which is kind of this big process that we learn. It's a nice guess and check. We'll, we'll call it an educated guess and check method of how to factor things that have higher power terms in them. Look for our synthetic division videos to come. We'll give you some info on that. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with the factoring. Good luck in general on all this.